just woke up from an after church nap, like a two hour long nap. I just took a spoonful of peanut butter, swig of grape juice, and I'm good to go. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Thank you for joining me today. This lovely Sabbath day where it is 60 degrees and rainy. What else is new here? It doesn't even feel like it's June. My name's Hallie. If you thought my name was Haley, you're like the rest of the world. Today's video is so long overdue. This is a topic I wanted to talk about and I've like mentioned a few times and I just didn't really want to get on like my spiel, my soapbox and just talk about things that we all kind of know are annoying, but I am on a social media fast right now. So you may be surprised to see me on here. So with this social media fast, a lot of good things have happened. I'm gonna make a whole separate video about it, but I have been reading conference talks every single day. If you saw my spiritual funk video, then you know that's kind of what I've been doing to find a way to put the spirit in my life and find more light and truth and feast on the gospel every day. I didn't realize that last night I listened to priesthood session talk and it was so surprising to me that th this talk was given in priesthood. It was by Elder Uchtdorf on being genuine. And he starts off talking about this story of this Russian leader who basically in order to make uh, all the towns look super like wealthy or in good standing, she would set up all these fake props and have all these fake things happen just to make them look good because someone was like visiting and then they'd go on to the next town and do the same thing so that someone could see that everything was jolly. And it's, I forget what it's called because it's like a Russian word, but it's, it's basically a, a saying now that people are blah, 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 which means they put on this like fake persona to try to impress someone. And then it talks about how there's nothing wrong with hiding the dirty dishes when the home teachers come over and wanting to smell good or, you know, take care of the exterior of your home and try to make things nice. Like there's nothing wrong with that. What's wrong is the point where it gets deceitful and dishonest and where our hearts are not turned towards righteous things and righteous purposes behind doing those things. The, the scripture that their mouths are close to me, but their hearts are far from me. This idea of like being fake and being a hypocrite. And I, I just have to talk about this plague of perfectionism within the Mormon culture. Okay, I'm not talking about doctrine and within social media and how it ties into this issue with Mormon culture. I know the Mormon church does put a lot of pressure on us to have kids well behaved during church and to look nice, you know, Sunday best for church and to not be in debt, to have healthy finances, to do our home teaching, visiting teaching, but that's pretty much it. We know we're not going to be perfect in this life. No one said we need to have the most amazing out of this world lessons of all these crafts or activities or take home things like people go so above and beyond because they they want to look good i mean i do know that they're in people's hearts they also want the lesson to go well so that people can learn so that people can feel the spirit things like that but there are so many people who just feel like I do not belong in the Mormon church because I go on Sunday and I just, I'm not like everyone else. I'm a failure. I don't have this picture perfect life. I might have tattoos or might have, you know, not fancy clothes. I might go to church in blue jeans or I might have a really crummy house or crummy apartment or my kids are not well behaved, whatever it might be. Um, whether it's just knowing that I have sins, that I have mistakes I've made, and I'm not perfect, and I see these people giving these lessons and bearing their testimonies, and who say and do all these wonderful things, and I'm not like them. I'm not as good as them. Everyone else is so much better than me. And I loved that the talk talked about how the church is a hospital where the sick 
go to get better. We are all sick. All of us need help. All of us need improvement. Church is not a place for perfect people to go and have a party because yay, we're perfect. So I will say, I understand that through social media, there are a lot of people who seem to be living these picture perfect lives. And truly, we don't know what's going on behind closed doors. We don't know what they're struggling with. But that's kind of the thing that bugs me so much because as you guys probably know, I've said this so many times on my channel, my purpose for YouTube and social media is to let you guys know you're not alone. Whether it's struggles in your marriage, struggles with confidence, struggles with your past, with things in the Mormon church, with whatever. Like, I just want you people to know that you are not alone. That hopefully I can be honest and share some real things, good and bad, for you guys to know like, okay, I'm not the only person who's gone through this or I'm not the only person who feels this way. And the problem that I have with social media is you're sitting here behind your phone screen and you're like, geez, this person's house is always clean and their house is beautifully decorated. Wow, they must have so much money, but there's no way they could be in debt and their house just looks immaculate and their kids are dressed so cute and they're always so done up and everything just looks so good. They have all these cute, nice pictures. Her and her husband look like they're so in love. They're all over each other. Like we see these things, these women with perfect bodies and perfect makeup and we just feel like, A, I need to have that. I need to be that. And two, I am a piece of crap because I don't have that. And so much of it is not real. I just have to say, and now, I mean, I'm a person who dyes my hair, wears extensions, fake tans, color contacts, eyelash extensions. Like by no means am I saying that we can't do things to improve our appearance and make our homes nice and whatnot. But it is hard when we see these like beauty bloggers or celebrities, you know, Kardashians who right out of the shower, they look absolutely stunning, no makeup on, and they have no stretch marks and they just have perfect flawless skin and their hair is so beautiful blah, 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 blah. and we don't know how many, how many treatments they've gotten done to be able to look that way. Not saying that they might not look that way on their own, but behind the scenes, it might not be totally accurate. There may be a lot of fancy spa treatments and facials and surgeries, plastic surgeries, you know, to get people to look the way we look. And then I see that and I'm like, I want to look like that. She looks amazing. And that's not... It's just not right to compare myself to something that I, I really never will be because I'm never going to go have all these fancy things done, these treatments or surgeries or whatever. And there's the people who just cleaned that one moment, that one spot in their room just to take that picture. Like their whole house is a mess. But we don't see that because we only see everything that's perfectly staged and decorated and cleaned. Or the mom who looks like she's always wearing the most adorable high fashion outfits. She really lives in sweats all day, but she just went and put those clothes on, stepped outside to take pictures because it's her job, Instagram model job, and then goes back inside, takes the clothes off, puts sweats back on. Or, I, I mean, I've seen this, I know some of these things firsthand, like these people have all these pictures taken, they have like a photographer come over and take these lifestyle photos of them in their kitchen or in their bedroom and they look so happy, they're playful, they're loving, they're all over each other and then two seconds later they announce they're getting divorced. Like you do not know what's going on behind closed doors. And I have been on the receiving end of people thinking they know everything about my life just because they see, you know, me talk on these YouTube videos and they see me post pictures. Like, you don't know. You are seeing me sitting right here. You are not seeing me interact with my husband interact with the world on a daily basis. You're not seeing me when I'm hangry or first thing in the morning, when I'm tired or, I mean, you've seen me without makeup on and stuff, but like, you don't know everything about my life. You only know what I share and the side of me that you see on here, which I do try to be very transparent and open, but what I'm saying is there's more that goes on behind closed doors. And I wish that people would share more because I think it would be very, very helpful if these people who do have you know, hundreds of thousands, if not millions of followers, could be genuine and realistic and share struggles with their followers. But you know what? I understand why they don't, and I, I didn't get it before now, but 
I mean, I'm just a little person, right? I have like less than 5,000 followers on Instagram and I get so much hate. People creating fake accounts just to message me and say horrible things. And so imagine these people who have so many more followers, how much hate they must get. It makes you not want to share anything personal about your life, especially when they're attacking you as a parent or they're attacking your spouse or whatever it might be. I get why they don't want to share anything personal. It's a lot easier to only talk about clothes and makeup and get like no criticism than share real things about life, real things that you might even struggle with and have people make it even harder. So I get it. And for me, it's just worth the sacrifice. I know not everyone could take it. I'm not saying I'm better than them, but for me, I just know that this is my calling and I do have to be open and it, it is worth it to share, you know, the hard things, the personal things, the messy, ugly things. But it's, it is just very difficult when we are constantly comparing our lives to something on social media that we don't know the reality of it. Have you heard that thing that if we all put our struggles in a hat, everything that you know we're dealing with, our burdens, our difficulties, our trials, we'd want to take our own back. We don't. We just we don't know what someone else is going through, and I think it would be very helpful if people would at least be more honest about this is what goes on behind the scenes. Like my house doesn't always look like this, or I don't always look like this, or you know I I have struggled. I have gone through these things. My advice for those who are struggling with feeling like there's this whole world on social media and in Mormon culture where we just see these picture perfect people that they seem to be living picture perfect lives and we will never compare because I'm a sinner. I make mistakes every day or I, I live an imperfect life where I struggle with several different things. Remember that one, we don't know the full story. We don't know what happens behind closed doors. And two, we can choose to unfollow people that make us feel bad about ourselves. I wish we could just like suck it up and, and deal with it, but it's not always easy to. Every single day seeing people that I just think are skinnier than me, prettier than me, have better bodies than me, have nicer houses than me, have more money than me, have all these things that I want. It's just like a daily reminder of what I don't have. And that kind of makes me feel like a failure. But there was a super, super awesome line in Elder Uchtdorf's talk Usually the things that you can count, how much money you have, or how many followers you have, or how many vacations you go on, or how many free clothes you get, la 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 la. The things that you can count, usually don't count. And the things that you can't count, like your family, and the relationship you have with your savior, the things you can't put a number on, those are the things that do count. So having an eternal perspective and remembering what truly matters, you can't lose sight of that. And it is definitely something that I, I struggle with. And I know that there's so many who, who struggle with going to church and with seeing these Mormon bloggers and whatnot on Instagram. And it feels like degrading almost. And it, it's so sad and I wish it didn't affect us, but... This is the world we live in. And I'm, I'm so happy that I took this social media break. It's only been like four days, five days, six days. <laughs> and I, I don't even wanna go back on, honestly. I would be so happy to just sit here and make YouTube videos and then do nothing with Instagram. I really think Instagram is becoming a tool of the devil with pornography and with the hate, the awful evil things people say and the fraud that it is creating, the, the the fact that people feel so much pressure on themselves to live this like, or at least show a picture perfect life that isn't real and they're so consumed with it and having the best pictures ever and taking all this time to plan out their pictures and have them photographed and have them edited and posting so often and getting more followers and more likes and I get it, it it's a business. I'm, People make a lot of money from it, but remembering what matters most and the things that count most are things we typically can't count, like followers and money. And I do have it, especially a pet peeve of mine with the Mormon bloggers who are never wearing garment friendly clothes. And it's not while they're just wearing like a cover up because they're uh, at the beach all day or because they were exercising. It's like 
normal clothes and they're just out and about. And I'm like, you're Mormon, where are your garments? Like I get messages all the time from non-Mormons saying, I followed this person, they're Mormon, but they're, I'm, they're never wearing garments, why? And I'm like, I don't know, because they don't want to, because they don't care about them, because they don't know what they mean, because they'd rather wear other clothes, because they don't have a testimony of them. It's like, I can't answer that question on their behalf. My only answer is yes, they should be wearing them, but for whatever reason, they're not. So it is frustrating to see all this power and influence that they could have for good if they talked more about the gospel, if they talked more about the hard things they faced or showed more of the behind the scenes things. But in the end, we are in control of how we respond and react to the things we see online and the things we follow. So if it upsets us, if it makes us feel crappy, we need to unfollow. If we struggle at church with feeling like everyone's perfect, talk about it. Because I guarantee you, you'll get at least five hands telling you, I feel the exact same way. I sit here and I look around the room and I feel like, oh my gosh, these people are so perfect. And yeah, I know that they're not, but I feel like I can't, I'm not as good as them. I can't compare it to them. And there's the quote, a saint, like us, Latter-day Saints, okay? A saint you think of as someone who's like so holy and amazing and may be perfect. A saint is not a perfect person. A saint is a sinner who keeps on trying. A person who repents for their mistakes, who doesn't give up, who every day tries to be a little bit better, that is what a saint is. A saint is not a person who pretends to be perfect and doesn't actually try to be good. They just put on a facade and live this fake pretend life. That's, that's not a saint. That's not what Christ wants of us. That's not turning our hearts towards him. So I hope that you guys I found some value in this and that you know like you're not alone and feeling like social media kind of ruins your life and makes you feel like crap and that it's hard to go to church sometimes. It's hard to be in a Mormon culture where so, much, so many people put an emphasis on living an apparently perfect life. But remember what really counts are the things we can't count and that we don't know what's going on behind the scenes and we truly all do struggle and have trials and... Even though we don't see everyone else's, doesn't mean that their life really is any better than yours. And have an eternal perspective and remember what matters most and keep on trying. You do your best because we can't control other people's lives. You do your best every day and you will be blessed. So I'm gonna leave it at that. I will link the talk for you guys at the end of this video and in the description bar if you want to listen to Elder Ukdorf's talk. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye.